Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God that we consider for this evening as we consider the theme that Christ is compared with other Old Testament heroes is found for us in the book of Hebrews, the lesson which you've already heard. You can follow along with it as we go along in the sermon. It's on the back side of your service folder. If you did any shopping online just a couple of days ago on what's become known as Cyber Monday, and you bought anything, then you were part of the the record amount of sales online for any single day. 3.5 billion, almost 3.5 billion dollars were sold on that particular day. Well, if you happen to be online that day, there's a line of items on Amazon that you could have looked at, perhaps bought if you wanted to. A line of items such as coffee mugs and T-shirts and sweatshirts, all with this saying on it, mediator, because superhero is not an official job title. Think for a moment, if you wanted to give such a gift to somebody, who it might be. Maybe you'd give it to your mom for stepping in between you and your sibling before you got too out of hand. Or maybe you'd give it to your child's teacher for for making sure they settled that dispute between your child and her classmate. Perhaps it's a coach you'd give it to for stepping in the middle of those two kids that were in a shoving match with each other. Or maybe you'd give it to a neighbor for coming in at just the right time as you and your neighbor, another neighbor, were in the middle of an argument. Or perhaps it's a marriage counselor who has helped you and your spouse iron out some problems within your marriage. Whatever the case, being a mediator is not an easy task. Reconciling Two sides can be very difficult and tricky. And yet you and I know the greatest mediator of all time. It's the very one whose birth we're going to celebrate in just a short time. It's the very one whose presence we're expecting at any time. It's the very one who comes to us still today in word and sacrament, and visits us very closely. Yes, it's Jesus Christ, isn't he? Jesus Christ is that great mediator. And this evening we take some time to compare our great mediator, Jesus Christ, with one of the Old Testament heroes, a man by the name of Moses a man whose name I'm sure you know very well and probably could tell me many things, but let's just recount a little bit. Consider who Moses was, because to a Jew or to an Israelite, Moses was the man. There's probably no larger figure in their history than Moses. Just think what impact he had. First of all, Moses was the one who was picked out by God, handpicked by God. Remember the burning bush? And how Moses came to that burning bush and it spoke to him. It was the Lord that was calling him and saying, Moses, I've got a job for you. You're going to lead my people. And that's where his leadership all began, in Egypt. In Egypt, where he negotiated with Pharaoh to release the Israelites from captivity. It took him ten plagues to finally allow, have Pharaoh allow them to, 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 to leave, right? But they weren't on their way very long before Pharaoh changed his mind and started pursuing those Israelites and had them cornered at the Red Sea. That's where God used 
Moses and his leadership once again, right? He had him raise his staff in his hand, and the Lord made the seas part so that the Israelites could walk across on dry land. And then when the pursuers were right in the middle of that riverbed or that seabed, he had him raise his hands again. And the Lord had the waters come crashing down, killing all the Egyptian army. Moses continued to, to lead the nation of Israel after that point for the next 40 years. Moses was key for them throughout those years. And at the end of his time on earth, Scripture tells us that Moses died before entering the promised land. And it's kind of interesting to see that in the, the version of the English version of the Bible we use, the NIV, the New International Version, says that it was, he himself buried Moses, talking about the Lord. Now you can, actually you can translate that, that was Moses was buried. But the translators of this portion of scripture in this particular version thought it best to say that it was the Lord who buried Moses. Now that translation might have been influenced a little bit by the importance of Moses in scripture and the importance of Moses to God's people. But nonetheless, we don't want to underestimate the importance of Moses, the importance Moses had to God's people. And you know, we haven't even touched on perhaps the biggest thing that Moses is known for, and that is receiving the Ten Commandments, receiving the very law of God. At that same time, What's not as well known is that Moses received all the civil and ceremonial laws. In fact, it was at that time that they set up their way of life, their sacrificial way of life. The priesthood was established at that time. Moses was known from that point on as the lawgiver. In our text, the writer to the Hebrew links Moses with Jesus by saying that they were both faithful to what they were called to. And that's very true. Both Moses and Jesus were very faithful in what they were supposed to be doing. But you know, that's where the comparison kind of ends. Jesus is clearly greater than Moses ever was. And it has to be that way. Otherwise, we'd have really no hope. And let's see the various ways now that Jesus is greater than Moses as spelled out in this book of Hebrews. Note here at the beginning, Jesus is called an apostle. It's actually the only part of scripture where Jesus is is called that. But Jesus was and is God's representative. He was sent out by God to accomplish God's work. What set him apart from Moses and the New Testament apostles was the fact that Jesus is God. That's clearly spelled out here in our text. On that point alone we could make the argument that Jesus is greater than Moses. Right? Hands down. He's God. He wins. But the writer of the Hebrews goes on and brings out even more of a thorough argument here. The argument surrounds the building of the house, as it's called here. The house, which is referring to God's house, God's church the holy Christian church and the communion of saints. The author to the Hebrews says, Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder 
of everything. While Moses was, be, was responsible for leadership in, among God's people, it was Jesus himself who put God's people together in the first place. Jesus is responsible for building the church of God. Recall what Paul wrote to the, to the Ephesian Christians. You are no longer foreigners and aliens but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And so just as Jesus was there at creation as God to assist in the creation of the world, it was Jesus who set down the foundation of the church of God. He has brought believers into that church through his word, through holy baptism. Moses was a member of that church, is a member of that church. And he entered that church by faith, just as we enter that church. Our text takes the argument of Jesus' superiority even further. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. Here's another way in which they differed, as far as rank, you could say, in a sense. There's a big difference between a servant and a son, isn't there? While Moses faithfully did all that God asked, he was still a servant. A willing servant, mind you. Moses was doing it, doing God's will willingly here, but he was still a servant. A servant who was willing to do the work of God, but a servant nonetheless. Jesus is greater by virtue of who he is, as the Son of God. That fact by itself testifies to Jesus' greatness. While Jesus rules the household of God as the Son, Moses is simply a part of that household, just like you and I are a part of that household. There's one more vital thing that makes Jesus greater than Moses. I want to take you to the the top of Mount Nebo for just a moment. That's in present-day Jordan. There is a church there, a Christian church, that marks the place or the area where they believe Moses may have looked over into the promised land before he died. And there's a plaque on the the outside of that church that contains an important passage from Scripture, from John chapter 1. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You see, Moses truly represents the law. The law that cannot save you and me. Sin once, and you've broken the whole law. We know that it's impossible from the beginning to keep the law since we're born with a sinful condition anyway. If we think that when we sin, we'll just do better the next time, and that'll take care of things, well, then we're just deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. The truth is that Jesus is greater than Moses because he represents grace and truth. Jesus is greater than Moses because he is, as the Hebrew writer says, the high priest whom we confess. Jesus is our great high priest. As high priest, Jesus is served as our mediator, as our go-between. 
Jesus represented us before God. How in the world could he reconcile us to God? How could he patch up that relationship that we had totally messed up? Well, he did it by becoming the sacrifice for our sins. He became that great Passover lamb who died for us so that we might live and live to the full and live forever in God's family. Yes, you are a part of God's house where the Son rules. A part of God's family. There are many things which will try to separate you from that. The devil and the world are constantly at you, certainly two big forces that will attempt to do that. And a big temptation will be to return to Moses, the lawgiver. You better be good, for goodness sake. That's the tempting words that are out there in this day and age. In this time of year, if you're good, then you'll be loved. If you're good, then God will love you. That's a dangerous theme this time of year that we hear, that we dare not get sucked up into. Keep in mind that Moses and all that he represented was was really looking forward to the greater one. It was Moses himself who knew that a Savior a Messiah was coming. In fact, Moses wrote that God would raise up a prophet like him. And when he wrote those words, Moses also said, you must listen to him. Take Jesus, or take Moses' advice. Listen to Jesus. He tells you that he has come to seek and to save the lost, to forgive. Jesus has done it. Believe it. Amen.